We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up, people. Check out my nails. They're orange with a white stripe on them. I painted my nails over the weekend. Why? If you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see exploded onto the world. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message. Thicken your skin. Over to you, David Goggins. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. People are saying, man, you cuss all the fucking time. Why? <laughs> well, I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what? Yeah, I went through Hell Week and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no, that takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to start. It, it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. Mm. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Oh God, I love that. We so tap true. dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay, trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. I believe that it's not the fear of failure that holds most people back, it's the fear of failing in front of somebody else. It's the fear of judgment. It's you going out and trying something, whether it's a big picture thing or just a little tiny thing, you wanna do it, but then that little instinct kicks in, how will I be judged? How will people think about me? And so yes, it's about thickening your skin, but then it's how do you do it? How do you thicken your skin? Because just telling yourself you need to thicken your skin, you need to act tough, isn't going to help you, at least in my opinion. Here are the ways that I do it. I think you don't thicken your skin by doing some big Herculean thing. I think it's a matter of identity. I think it's a matter of you believing in yourself that you are the kind of person who when adversity comes, when fear of judgment comes, that you stick through it and you do it. And so it comes from doing the micro. It's in the everyday. It's in the little tiny things on a daily basis that make you nervous. And so the best habit that I think you can develop, if you have the courage to do it, is every time you recognize that you are playing small, that you are risking not doing something because of how you might be judged by somebody, that's when you know you have to go out and do it. As an example, check out my nails. They're orange with a white stripe on them. I painted my nails over the weekend. Why? So, Toronto Dance Salsa, we have a dance school. My team recently won a dance competition and so I wanted to take everybody out to get their nails done. Manicures, pedicures, the women loved it. I was then asked, hey Evan, do you want to get your nails done as well? And my initial default reaction was just a little bit of anxiety. Oh, do I want to get my nails done? Like how would I be judged? How would people see me? I have meetings coming up. I have YouTube videos to make. I've got a lot of important meetings that are happening in my life. I'm gonna walk around with my nails painted. And because I felt that discomfort, I knew then I had to go out and do it. As soon as you feel that discomfort, it means you have to go out and take that action. Jason walked in here, my cameraman, he looks at my nails and he says, you're crazy. <laughs> Why? Why? Why did you do that? Yes, exactly. That's what I need to feel. I'm inoculating myself against the judgment of other people. And that's what I want you guys to start thinking about. It's not about doing this big Herculean thing. It's not about walking to the gym and lifting a thousand pounds. You will never do the big thing if you can't do the little thing. You can't lift a thousand pounds until you get used to lifting 10 pounds. 
and these are the 10 pound situations. Most of them you'll never even catch. That's the crazy thing. Most of the time we play so small on autopilot. Most of the time I would have said no to painting the nails without even catching that is because I'm afraid. That's how we live our life every day, constantly. And so the trick is when you catch yourself thinking about doing something and the first reaction is fear of judgment, then training yourself to go off and do that thing. Because here's what happens. If you think about painting your nails and you're worried and you do it, then what it does is it starts to build the identity for yourself that when I get faced with a difficult situation, I'm the kind of person who leans into it and does it. Whatever scary thing, even in the micro, tiny little scary thing that you wanna do, that you're afraid of how some stranger's gonna think of you when you walk down the street, and you do it, you're training yourself, you're building the muscle, even though it's small right now, that every time I feel discomfort, I feel potentially being judged, I do that thing. Flip side is though, if you don't take action, then you're also training yourself to lose every day. You're training yourself that whenever I get faced with judgment, I shrink. And every time you shrink, the next time you're more likely to shrink again, and the next time shrink again, and the next time shrink again. It's the same thing with the snooze button in the morning. If you say, I'm gonna hit my goal, I'm gonna wake up first thing in the morning, I'm gonna wake up on time, 7 a.m., 7.30, 6.30, whatever it is for you, I'm gonna wake up at this time and then smash that snooze button. The very first thing you've done every morning is tell yourself that I'm gonna create a goal and I'm not, it's okay if I don't hit it. I'm not the kind of person who follow through on my goals. That's what you're telling yourself. That's how most people wake up every day and that's why they lead a life that they suck. They set a goal, they didn't do it. You have taught yourself to not follow through. And so it's no wonder that most people can't go and create amazing businesses and amazing lives for themselves. They're stuck thinking about how do I do this big thing? You can't even wake up on time. This person who believes that they can't wake up on time and has to hit the snooze button and lets himself down every single morning is not the kind of person yet who can go off and build that amazing thing. And so it's the same thing applied to fear of judgment. You cannot go off and do this big scary thing where there's gonna be lots of people judging you. You're not capable of doing that yet until you build the muscle in the micro. You build the muscle on a daily basis. And so the good news is you can control that. The good news is you can fail small. You can test all these things on a really small scale where only the five closest people to you might be judging you. But the more you can inoculate yourself against the fear of judgment, the more you just get used to it, then the less it's gonna impact you. And the more you're gonna be able to go off and do the thing that you really wanna do. And so I highly encourage you the next time you feel yourself shrinking down, playing small, worried about opinions, worried about feedback, worried about judgment, whatever that thing is that you want to do or you've thought about, even if you didn't want to do it. I didn't want to paint my nails, but I was worried about the judgment. The reason to not do it was because of judgment, not because of anything else. Just for that reason alone, I had to go out and do it. So I highly encourage you the next time you feel yourself feeling that way, when you can catch it, because most of the time you play small by default, but when you catch it and you know I'm afraid of doing this because of how somebody's gonna judge me, then you know, then you know, then you know, then you know, then you know that you have to go out and do that thing. You have to do it. Even if you fail, you have to do it because you are building the identity that I am the kind of person who is not gonna be impacted by your opinion of me. My self-worth is in no way tied to what you think about me. All I care about is what I think about me. Learn to inoculate yourself and develop that thicker skin. Now I have a really special bonus clip for you, but before getting to that, I wanna know what is one thing that you can do today? Today, like let's solve this. Let's start building our thicker skin right now. Don't wait until next week or next month or next year. Like if, if this is an issue for you, let's solve it right now. What is one thing that gives you anxiety about doing? Maybe it's making a video in public, right? Maybe it's posting something on Twitter. Maybe it's telling your mom something that you need to discuss about. Maybe it's asking a girl out, like whatever the thing is, that you have anxiety around doing, just go and do it. And expect it not to work out. It's okay, it could be the biggest failure ever, you don't get any kind of result, but the result, the real result, is you're starting to build the muscle. You're starting to build the muscle, starting to build the momentum, that you are the kind of person, who, when discomfort comes, you lean in on it and you crush it. So what is that one thing that you can do today? Leave it in the comments below, and by writing it down, you're committing yourself to doing it and making some progress. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. 
I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of espresso and enjoy the bonus clip. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. You know, I think we all take body blows in the entertainment business. You, there's always something that happens that makes you go, oh, like, damn. Like, there's, a, there's, there's moments where you got to take the knee. Lucian was the first person to put me down to where I had to take a knee. He was, he was basically, he told me that I needed to find something else to do. You know, it, it was that blunt. I got off stage. I had a great set. You know, granted, my material wasn't sure. great material. I'm new. I'm green. But I had a great set. The crowd enjoyed me. And I thought that I was going to the back to talk to him about coming to the comic strip and doing spots. And instead, it was just, I don't see it. I don't see this being your craft. Um, you know, I, I think that you should definitely look into doing something else because this isn't, this isn't it. This isn't, this isn't for you. And that's the first time that I heard that. But I had a guy like Keith that I was so close to that I told him and I'm expecting Keith to be like, damn, if Lucian said that, it's it's yeah. something. And Keith was like, ah, fuck Lucian. So what? Come on, stupid. Let's go down to the cellar and get something to eat. And I was like, eat? I can't eat <laughs> yeah. at a time like this. My life is over. Shut up, stupid. He's Get in the car <laughs> and we'll go to other comedy clubs. Like he was so, it was so nonchalant and it rolled off his back. And when I saw that, I was like, I was still affected by it, but I was like, man, I don't know how he's acting like this is no big deal. This is me. This is my career. It is a big deal. And then we get down to the cellar and everybody there is just, so what? Whatever. And we all were so vicious to each other and we all were so mean to each other. But what we really did was prepare each other for the word no that could come at any possible time. We made each other comfortable with the fact that we were, we were okay. We're going to be okay. The best defense to, uh, to speech that you don't like about yourself as a public figure is to develop a thick skin. It, 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 it's really the only effective defense because you can't stop it. Um, you know, you are going to be misunderstood. If you're doing anything interesting in the world, you're going to have critics. The only way, if you, if you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. And then you can insulate yourself, then think how wonderful your life will be. If you see something, I don't know, you're kind of a public figure, and you've probably, things have probably been written about you that you didn't think were nice. That's true. And, um, and, and, and my, my advice, if you came to me and said, Jeff, this, you know, somebody wrote this and it really hurt my feelings, what should I do? I would say, go stand on a street corner and watch in a crowded urban area and watch all the people walk by and think about what they're thinking about. I bet you none of those people are thinking about you. It really, in your mind, you can do this thought experiment. Like, okay, there's a woman who just walked by. What's she actually thinking about? Probably what might, maybe what she's going to cook for dinner that night. Or that, um, the argument that she had with one of her employees. Or whatever it is. Like, it's not about us. A lesson in branding. Whenever you're trying to brand yourself, or any company, if you change your brand from what it used to be, at a ri a right away you can get resistance. So most people, when they get a little resistance, because most people don't have thick skin, they stop. But over time, if you keep branding yourself in the new brand, then eventually it catches on. Like I used to not have much fitness stuff, so when I started putting fitness stuff, people were like, what is all this fitness? Now, eventually, people just associate that with you, and they forget there was a time when you didn't do it. So that's a good tip on branding. You have to have thick enough skin because it's kind of like when Facebook changed. Every time they change their interface, people go nuts. Oh, I hate this. But then three months later, they can't remember the old one. And then when you change to a new one, they say, no, we like the one before. But that one before is the one they hated because it was a change from the version of, you know, one before. But Mark Zuckerberg's smarter than people. <laughs> That's why he just keeps changing it to whatever is better, and then people eventually like it. Same when Instagram changed their logo. And Snapchat change there, you know, people always, a lot of people have low O, meaning low openness to new experience. They automatically hate anything new. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word, this is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon, 
Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.